transgressions, your very lives will gladly be given in tribute to me.
Now, most of you probably know that I've been away for the past week, drinking and partying and generally pretending to be some kind of big shot at Tampa Bay Comic Con, which was fucking awesome by the way, but all good things must come to an end, and after waking up in the swamplands of Florida with a dead alligator on one side and an inflatable woman on the other, or was it the other way around, I realised it was time to return to not so sunny Scotland and get back to reviewing the state of modern entertainments. But what should I talk about, I pondered as I sat waiting for my flight and hoping I was airborne before the state police found that dead, uh alligator. Well, as it happened, fate stepped in at that very moment to provide me with an answer. Damn, one thing I'll say about Warner Brothers, unlike Disney Marvel, at least they're efficient with their stupidity. Now they're even cancelling finished movies before we can even see them. Honestly, give it a few more years and they're just gonna dump a hundred million dollars into a big pile and set it on fire. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, this is the first time that something like this has ever happened. Yeah, plenty of movies have flopped and TV shows have been cancelled, and then you get weird anomalies like that Fantastic Four movie from back in the 90s that was basically just a low budget rights retainer designed never to be seen, but this is the first actual legit movie with big name actors and a real budget to get shit canned when it's basically ready to go. Damn man, you've got to feel bad for the people involved in this. Like, imagine spending months or even years developing a major project like this, only to get told at the 11th hour that the whole thing's gonna get erased quicker than an unpopular Soviet citizen and all your hard work was for fucking nothing. It's a bit like taking the mountain to Mohammed, only to find out that he's already got a bigger one. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was always gonna be a tough sell from a floundering studio that doesn't seem to know what to do with its awesome lineup of characters. Yet another female-centric superhero flick from a company with a spotty track record for this kind of thing, featuring a race swap protagonist and some weird multiversal plot device that felt like a cheap excuse to get Michael Keaton back as Bruce Wayne, and I imagine the poor test screenings didn't exactly help convince the studio that they had a major hit on their hands, but if the rumours that I've heard are true, it actually scored higher than Black Adam and Shazam 2. Jesus, they're really fucked in that case. But even if it didn't test well, you've got to ask yourself, how bad does a film really need to be that the studio would rather pull the plug on the whole thing and lose tens of millions of dollars rather than just recut it and try to salvage something halfway decent? And keep in mind, this is the same studio that reckoned Birds of Prey, Justice League and Wonder Woman 1984 were fit for human consumption. <laughs> I mean shit man, you could even have released it direct to streaming and still recouped some of your losses. I don't know about you, but I'd rather make back 10 million dollars than zero dollars. Not a great plan. And Batgirl isn't the only movie to get shit canned. At the time of making this video, the rumour is that Supergirl is also on the chopping block. Hmm, two female centric superhero movies featuring race swap protagonists that happen to get unceremoniously cancelled at the same time? Whatever could be the connection here I wonder? Well buckle up dear viewer because we're about to venture into the murky world of corporate politics. The connection in this case is David Zaslow, the head of Warner Brothers Discovery, the new company that was created after AT&T dropped Warner Brothers like a big steaming turd because it was losing money hand over fist and Discovery bought it up instead. With the takeover came a new leadership team under Zaslow and a new objective to somehow unfuck the gigantic mess that DC on film has become. And holy shit, this guy doesn't mess around. Right off the bat, he fired a bunch of senior executives from the old regime. Sorry, encouraged them to step down of their own free will, and now he's turned his attention to the films that they were making. See, this isn't the first time that Warner of course corrected like this. In the wake of the failed Snyderverse, the film division was reorganised under Walter Hamada, and his genius strategy was to basically do whatever was popular at the time. And what was popular at the time was diversity, female empowerment and representation. And rather than try to work those things into his movies with skill, intelligence and patience, Warner Brothers and instead decided to just straight up replace popular characters played by problematic white men with more diverse alternatives. That's how we ended up with race swapped Barbara Gordon replacing Batman and race swapped Kara Zor-El replacing Superman. Not to mention female centric movies like Birds of Prey and Wonder Woman 1984. Unfortunately this change of direction didn't exactly pan out the way the studio imagined. <laughs> 
of the latter two movies were gigantic turds that lost Warner Brothers a shit ton of money, and as for the others, well, I think it's fair to say that after nearly a decade of having THE MESSAGE shoved down our throats, audiences are getting a little bit tired of this shit. Simply race or gender swapping an existing character isn't going to earn you the kind of mindless applause that it used to. Pushing identity politics into stories where it doesn't belong, or presuming to lecture your audience on how they need to live their lives, is increasingly causing them to vote with their wallets. I think that Zaslow knows this, and that's why he killed Batgirl and probably Supergirl too, because they're both irrevocably tainted with the same stain. Of course, he also knows that he can't publicly criticise THE MESSAGE without incurring the wrath of the people who push it so hard, so instead it was easier to make the excuse that the film was just plain shit and that's why he's cancelling it. I mean, maybe it actually is shit too, but let's be real here, Warner's never had a problem with putting out terrible comic book movies before, so why start now? I mean, it's not like their other upcoming films are going to set the world on fire either. Aquaman 2 is saddled with the world's least appealing actress in a major supporting role, who's pretty much become box office poison at this point. The only way to possibly salvage this film is to completely recast her, which would need extensive reshoots and re-edits, all of which cost a lot of money. It's the same problem with The Flash. Ezra Miller is the PR equivalent of a drunken man driving a battle tank through an antique store, but again, it would be so difficult and expensive to recast the main actor at this point that you'd be better off scrapping the entire film and starting again. And it's not like Warner Brothers have another 200 million dollars just lying around doing nothing. Instead, they're doing the only reasonable thing that they can by cancelling the films that are cheap enough to kill outright and applying some damage control to the other ones. If Amber Heard somehow doesn't get removed, I'd expect her role to be cut down to the bare minimum in the finished product, and as for Ezra, well, I wouldn't expect to see him in many more DC films after this, that's for sure. That's the short term picture with stuff that's already in the pipeline, but what's more interesting here are the larger implications of this change. Put simply, this is a wake up call, not just at Warner but in Hollywood at large. It's an acknowledgement that what they've been doing isn't working, and it reinforces my belief that when the chips are down, the industry follows money more than it ever followed any ideology. Ultimately, the message is the kind of luxury that you can only indulge in when you're making money hand over fist, because the more you try to push it, the more people you end up pushing away. That's why Disney's been peddling this garbage so hard over the past several years, because up until recently at least, they could afford to do it. Warner can't, and with Zaslow on board, I think they've finally begun to acknowledge that. You'd be amazed how quickly ideology falls by the wayside once the money runs out, especially in a time where people routinely lie for a living, have all the integrity of a crooked politician, and only pretend to support current thing as long as current thing stays popular. And the simple fact is that now, it isn't. Now it's time to stop fucking around, jettison the dead weight and get things back on track. So I guess what I'm saying with all this is that while while Batgirl may have fallen victim to corporate politics rather than bad production, I think the longer term implications might be positive ones. Warner Brothers may be the first domino to fall, but something tells me they won't be the last, and when other companies realise that you can safely drop the message and the people peddling it, well, the next year or two could turn out to be very interesting. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.